Okay, I'm going to talk about some of the common errors that students make when they're completing the summary paper assignment and in an effort to hopefully help you to avoid some of these uh, mistakes that uh, students before you have made. Um, the first mistake students typically make is they don't choose a scholarly article. And it's really important for this assignment for it to work well and for you to learn what you need to learn. Um, you really need a scholarly article, not a newspaper article, not an article from a popular magazine, but something from a scholarly journal. And we'll define that in a moment. Um, a second mistake students make is they don't introduce the author and title concisely. Uh, sometimes students incorrectly quote an author who quotes another author. That can get tricky, so we'll talk about that. Um, larger works, that is uh, journal titles, magazine titles, newspaper titles, book titles, those are all larger works. Um, they are always in italics, in MLA style. Um, shorter works, like articles that appear in newspapers, magazines, or journals, or like a chapter title that appears in a book, those are considered shorter works that are part of a larger entity, and so those are in quotes. And then uh, oftentimes students use incorrect punctuation for direct quotes. And that is a pretty common error that uh, baffles English teachers, I think, because all the books we read have periods and commas inside quote marks, and yet um, students uh, time and time again uh, put those that those punctuation marks on the outside of those quote marks. See like right here where it says quotes and quotes? Got that period right there. So, okay, let's let's break each one of these down. Okay, um, a scholarly journal typically has a plain cover and the pages are consecutive throughout each volume. A popular magazine, on the other hand, will typically have an eye-catching cover with glossy paper and every issue starts at um, page one. Um, for, for a scholarly journal, the target audience includes people in a specific field. So if you're um, using a journal from the psychology field, um, the target audience is going to be people who do research in the psychology field, professionals in the psychology field, and students in the psychology field. Uh, a target audience for a general um, popular magazine um, like Psychology Today, uh, typically uh, they're written specifically for the general population. So it, the, the words are a little um, maybe easier to perceive. It's not as in-depth within the field. It's more of a general overview. Um, content in scholarly articles includes research projects, methodology, studies, um, and theories within the field, whereas um, popular magazines tend to cover in per personalities and people, um, news, and just general interest articles. Um, Articles are always written by contributing editors who are in the specific field. Um, that was my iPad. Uh, and whereas articles in a popular magazine are mostly written by people who are on the staff of that magazine. So they're not necessarily experts in the field. They may know a lot about the field, um, but they're not experts. And a lot of times these articles might not even have an author signed. Okay, in scholarly journals, there are, are very few, if any, advertisements. Popular art magazines are, uh, in contrast, they're heavily advertised. And uh, sources in scholarly journal articles are typically cited both in text and in footnotes in the bibliography or reference page, whereas sources are very informally cited if they're cited at all in popular magazines. So you're going to want to look for some of these attributes. Typically, you know, the bibliography is a good key, um, the contributing editor, the content. Um, these are things you want to look at when you choose a scholarly article. Okay, when you introduce your article, the first sentence in your summary should include the author and the title. 
Um, an introductory statement um, will typically have the article in quotes with the comment inside the quote mark. So let's take a look at this example. Please ignore the indent. Um, this is just a PowerPoint formatting thing, as you probably know, that uh, we can, cannot control. So um, just look at the text. Uh, in Is Google Making Us Stupid? This is an article, and it's in quotes. And you can see the comma inside the quote marks. Nicholas Carr shares his concerns, and notice how shares is present tense. Nicholas Carr, who's the author, shares his concerns about the effects regular search engine usage has on thorough, thoughtful research processes, and explains that the Google phenomenon affects people's brain activity, specifically their ability to process information. So the author is introduced by first and last name with a signal phrase verb in the present tense. Nicholas Carr states, and there is a concise statement that summarizes the main point of the article. So by reading this, this first sentence in a summary paper, I have a good idea about what the article is going to be about. Okay, um, this up here says, quoting the article or quite, quoting the author who's quoting another author. Here's an example. Sizer gives an example of, quote, the wild acceptability of these goals that was found in the courts. And now he's going to quote another author here. Forced to present a detailed definition of, this is the quote within a quote, thorough and effective education, quote within a quote, and then double quotes to end the whole thing. He cites Judge Arthur Reich, who ordered in Paul V. Kelly, 1979, and concluded that there are eight general elements of a thorough and effective system of education. Close quote, page number, period. So um, the quotes within a quote use the single quote mark. Say that 10 times fast. And um, the green quote was originally published in um, Judge Reich's article and is cited in Sizer's article. So you have to have both names so that the reader knows where this information comes from and that this is not coming directly. This green quote is not directly coming from the author. He's citing another author. So this is not something that you would typically even do a whole lot, but it does happen. So we want to make sure that we're citing properly. Okay, larger works should be in italics and shorter works in quotes. So larger works, like I said, include things like books, journal titles, and film titles. So the book, The Art of War, The Journal of Forensic Psychology, and The Godfather are all larger works. Article titles are typically shorter works, like um, the article is Google Making Us Stupid, which um, appears in actually uh, the Norton Field Guide for Writing that I use for a lot of my English classes. Um, this is an article, Facebook in a Crowd, that might be published in the Journal of Forensic Psychology. And uh, Guys versus Men is, I believe, it's a chapter title in the movie The Godfather. Okay. Um, incorrect punctuation for direct quotes. That's another issue. Sorry, I can't use the screens. The, if I have this all the way up, it cuts it off, but then I can't get my controls for the video. So um, sorry that that's missing. Um, anyway, the comma should appear inside the quote marks and the period should appear after the page number. So here's an example. Um, Johnson suggests, again we have a um, signal phrase here with a present tense verb that the um, that over the last half century blah 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 comma close quotes page number in parentheses and period. That's how it should always look. Okay, here are some sample first paragraphs um, that you might find useful. This first paragraph, if you want to, if you want to pause right now um, to take a look at it first, and then I'll, you can unpause it and hear my explanation. But you can see that the in the blue the article title is in quotes. So in execution saves innocence, oop, there should be a comma right here. Missed that. Um, Jeff Jacoby presents. That's the um, signal phrase with the author name and present tense. 
the facts and the rationale behind the pro-death penalty mentality, blah, blah, blah. So from this sentence, I have a really good idea of what Jacoby's article is going to be about. And then if you look through here, I, we've got um, Jacoby explains, Jacoby, however, refutes, he proceeds, he explains. Um, now you want to make sure you're varying sentence openers, which this example doesn't do a great job of doing because these first three sentences all have the first name of the author and the single phrase um, at the beginning of the sentence. So you might want to mix that up a bit, but this is a brief example of um, how this particular student handled, summarized this uh, article on the death penalty. All right, let's look, look at another one. Okay, in music instruction and the hearing impaired, so there's your article title in quotes, Eugenia, Eugenia Bulawa Walczak demonstrates that, and then we have that summary in two sentences of the bulk of what this particular article is about. Um, and then the student goes on to, again, have signal phrases. She implores, she suggests, she proposes. Um, she, there's transitions here because call and response song games provide active participation among students. Um, Walczak proposes blah, blah, blah. Um, so you want to make sure you're adding those signal phrases and transitions when you're summarizing an article. And then here is, I think this is the last um, example. We've got uh, Clive Thomas identifies effective blogging websites, how effective blogging websites influence society's social life and individuals' personal life in his article, I'm so totally digitally close to you. So this is a variation of what I'm asking. We still have um, the main idea in the first sentence of the article, we have the article title, we have the author named. And then this student goes on um, to use signal phrases, as you see in yellow, to continue. And um, this is just the first paragraph and a half of this student's summary. So hopefully these examples have helped you um, to complete this assignment correctly. Uh, this is a really important skill that you need throughout the semester, which is why I devote an entire assignment to it to really help you practice using signal phrases, using transitions, introducing a source, practice summarizing. These are all skills you need. Um, so hopefully this assignment will be one that prepares you for the rest of the semester. That's all I have right now. Have a great day and I'll see you online.